everyone. Welcome in. Hope you all had a nice, enjoyable weekend. We are once again returning to the grind on this wonderful Monday, and we continue on with our rookie review series. This is part five. We have reached the final third round pick of the Minnesota Vikings draft from the 2021 draft. And this is none other than Patrick Jones II, the edge rusher out of Pittsburgh. He was the 90th overall selection and the last of several third round picks for the Minnesota Vikings this year. They really knocked uh, the first couple of rounds out of the ballpark, in my opinion. So <clears throat> let's talk about Patrick Jones II and uh, what he signifies coming out of what was an otherwise high-risk, high-reward edge rushing class. And I just want to start off with saying that I would be lying if I wasn't disappointed that we didn't walk away with Jason Away or Quiddy Pay or Jalen Phillips in this draft because there were some guys that had the potential to be rock stars at the next level. And, but you know, the unfortunate part of this is that they all come with some kind of baggage, some more significant than others, or we're just unsure of if their actual, um, you know, skill set and talent will translate to the next level. The only one that I actually felt really like sure about to, to, uh, maybe consider as a first round selection at the edge position would have been quitting pay. Um, th there's some other medical red flags for most of the other ones, but, um, yeah, it was not in the cards because I think we can all agree that the Vikings sort of pigeonholed themselves into needing offensive line help very badly, and they had to address it early in this draft, which pushed other positions down the board. And that is why you wind up with an edge rusher being uh, your final of uh, a bunch of third round picks. So pick 90 overall is when you finally can address the edge position. And I'm not saying that as a knock against Patrick Jones, and I'm not saying it as a knock to the strategy, but at the same time, we're looking at a defensive line where one side starts to Neil Hunter, no questions asked, but then the other side, there is a question mark or two about who could potentially walk out of this group heading into OTA's mini camp and preseason. But I digress on that. Uh, that uh, We'll return to that conversation towards the end of the video. Let's talk about Patrick Jones, who he is and where he's from. So Patrick Jones II is a redshirt senior, six foot four, 261 pounds. Those are official pro day numbers. He's three-star recruit out of high school. He was the number 59 overall recruit from the defensive end position in his draft class and the number 35 overall recruit out of the state of Virginia. He's originally from Chesapeake, uh, where his family settled in 2013 after uh, his family moved all over the world uh, because his father was an IT in the Navy. So he was originally born in uh, Japan, which is actually kind of wild. Uh, spent some time in Italy, went back to Japan, and then uh, finally settled in Virginia. Uh, he ended up choosing the Pitt Panthers over Virginia Tech, so one way or another he was bound for the ACC, and he was also a participant in the 2021 Senior Bowl. And we'll get back to that in a minute and why it's significant in my opinion, because if you didn't see the uh, the practices leading up to that game, you're going to you know sort of want to maybe go check those out after we're done here. 2016 season, he red shirts for the Panthers. 2017, he gets his feet wet with seven tackles, one tackle for loss, and a half a sack in 10 games played. Uh, 2018, he appears in 14 games, no starts, gets 23 tackles, seven and a half tackles for loss, four sacks. 2019, he appears in 13 games, starts all 13 of them, 43 tackles, 12 tackles for loss, eight and a half sacks, four forced fumbles, ends up as second team all ACC honors. 2020, it only gets better from there. He starts and appears in 11 games, 44 tackles, 13 tackles for loss, 9 sacks, and finishes first team all ACC and was a team captain for the Pitt Panthers that season. Uh, scouting reports say that he has prototypical size for edge work in the NFL, and he's a consistent. he had consistent production over two seasons as a starter, which is something that you really want to look for, right? And, you know, stat statistics in college can be either a helpful narrative or a negative narrative. You know, uh, I think often about Jason Away had no sacks in his um, senior season with Penn State, but uh, it didn't matter because uh, to a lot of people because they saw the talent, they saw what could be some very serious potential production at the edge rusher position from that player, uh, and it doesn't help. It also does help immensely that you have a really good pro day. So, uh, you know, stats can play uh, two sides of the same coin, but when it comes to Patrick Jones, you look at his statistical pr uh, progression over four years. And uh, essentially two years as a starter, he gets a little bit better every year. And I think if the ACC would have played the full slate of games uh, that they had, they, they played 11, you know, you're probably thinking, what's two more games? Well, uh, two more games is potentially another couple of sacks. And we all know how people love to, uh, you know, lose their minds over the uh, sack category. So especially for edge rushing talent. So, uh, but it's nice to see that uh, as he got to be more of a participant in the system and 
uh, became a starter full time for two seasons, that his stats improved over time. So that's what you want to see. So that's uh, that's a good mark, in my opinion. That means there is room for improvement, especially at the next level. Once the coaches get a hold of him, this defensive line could be stuff of nightmares, hopefully if it pans out. I'll give you the Dane Brewler overall summary on Patrick Jones. He says, quote, Jones is a linear rusher who needs to be more efficient with his plan of attack and execution, but his length, burst, and mindset are encouraging foundational uh, traits. He projects as a potential NFL starter in a 4-3 base defense, which, welcome to Minnesota, that's what we have. So, my overall thoughts on Patrick Jones a second, now that we know who he is. Uh, number one, just to revisit a point we talked about earlier, the Senior Bowl. Go look at the clips from uh, some of the uh, practices from the Senior Bowl week leading up to the game. And you see him going one-on-one -on -one with guys like Quinn Miners, Dylan Radins, and James Hudson from Cincinnati. He didn't look great against those guys. Uh, those offensive linemen came to play in the Senior Bowl practices. And uh, he, he kind of got stood up against all three of them. Um, especially, and I don't know if that's concerning or if it's just uh, the fact that the talent at the Senior Bowl is always fantastic. Uh, they, get it, they do a great job of putting that... Uh, that whole game and that whole week on uh, for all of us to enjoy. But I don't know, Quinn Miners being from Wisconsin Whitewater, that, that strikes me as a player that you should be uh, able to get by, especially when you come from the ACC. Um, so that is a little bit of a concern, you know, not seeing him dominate at the, uh, at the Senior Bowl, which maybe could be the reason why he was available at uh, the 90th overall selection. Which brings me to my next point. When it comes to the edge rusher class this year, as I said in the beginning, very high risk, very high rewards uh, A group of guys at this position this year. It's nothing like the classes that we've seen in years past where we've been kind of spoiled having guys like, you know, Nick Bosa, Chase Young. Um, I, I think that this class could have been better, but with the overall, you know, arc that was the 2020 season and the year itself, plus you have some of these guys that come in with medical problems like Jalen Phillips, Gregory Rousseau. Um, and there's more question marks than there is solid answers. And that's why a lot of teams really reached and took some risk when they drafted edge rushers earlier than the Vikings did. So I'm okay with taking Patrick Jones off the board with the 90th overall pick. I think that's a very fair selection. That's good value. Um, it, it just adds another layer to an already pretty crowded uh, defensive end position uh, positional group where we're looking for a starter opposite of Daniil Hunter. Now, we, we brought back Stephen Weatherly. You add Patrick Jones to the mix. Uh, there's another rookie that we have to talk about yet. It's going to be Janarius Robinson. His video will be out uh, as soon as we get to him. And then we also have last year's uh, draft pick, DJ Wan. I mean, I'm sure there's a bunch of guys that I'm forgetting that uh, played for the Vikings last year that uh, uh, names slipped my mind right at this moment. But if we could, uh, you know, somewhat uh, go through OTAs, mini camps, have somebody like a Patrick Jones and a DJ Wanham go head to head in a position battle, and Patrick Jones comes out the winner, I'd be more than great. I'd be more than happy with that uh, result. I'd be more than happy with DJ Wanham coming out as the winner of that uh, camp battle. So, overall, Patrick Jones, it feels like a good pick. There's definitely going to be some, you know, uh, developmental time needed to get him in the mindsets, uh, and hopefully, the the hope really is that. If he isn't a full-fledged starter this year, which probably not going to happen, you know, third, late third-round picks are what they are, um, it, it at least gives them enough rotational pieces on the right side to spell and give uh, Daniil Hunter a chance to not face double teams every moment of his life this season. So I think that's where we stand with Patrick Jones II as the um, 90th overall selection in the draft by the Minnesota Vikings. Let me know what you think of the player and the pick itself in the comments below. Thank you for watching the video, and I will see you in the next one.